The title of this work is FAG based bootstrapping of designated prover and on interactive zero knowledge. I am Rotem and the, this is a joint work with Svika Brakersky and Sandra Gauk. So let me first describe the, the model we're working on. So we have two parties, a prover and a verifier, and there is some NP relation R, and we want to have a non-interactive zero knowledge protocol with respect to this relation. So the syntax is as follows. There is a setup algorithm that takes this relation R and then it generates two values. The first value is a common reference string, a CRS, and it is accessible to both the prover and the verifier. And the second value is a secret key. And we have this additional value because we are in a designated prover model. So this secret key is designated for the prover. So now assume that the prover has a pair of a statement X and a witness W in a way that X and W are authorized by the relation R. So the prover can generate a proof. It takes as input the pair of X and W, and in addition uses its secret key SK, and it generates a proof Phi. And then the verifier, given the pair of the statement X and the proof Phi, can verify that indeed X is in the language that is defined by R, and it can do it without seeing neither the, the witness W or the secret key that only the prover has. So this is the syntax. And now, given such protocol, we want it to satisfy three properties. So I'm not being uh, very formal here, but I will describe the intuition about uh, what we want. So for completeness, we want that if X and W are indeed in the relation, so the proof uh, that was generated by the prover will be accepted by the verifier. And now the two other properties concern the security. One is the security that the prover cares about, and the other one is the security that the verifier cares about. So the prover cares about zero knowledge, which means that it doesn't want to leak any information about the witness W that he used in order to generate the proof. So we use the standard zero knowledge de definition uh, with uh, simulation, but I will not go through the definition here. And for the verifier, we want the soundness property, which means that statements that are not true cannot be uh, proved by the prover. So uh, if there is an X that is not in the language, which means that there is no witness for which R accepts uh, X and W, then there is also no proof that will cause the verifier to accept the proof with respect to the statement X. Okay, so I want to point out that because we are in the designated prover model, the prover uh, gets uh, a secret key, and the security guarantee that the prover cares about is the zero knowledge, which means that if the verifier gets to see some information about the secret key, it might violate the zero knowledge, but it has no effect on the soundness, because the soundness is, is, is guaranteed to the verifier and the secret key uh, should remain hidden from the verifier. Um, one can think of other, model, other models, so of course there is the standard non-interactive zero knowledge in which there is only the CRS and no secret key, and there is the designated prover model where the prover uh, gets a secret key, and in addition there is a designated verifier model where the verifier gets a secret key, uh, and then his secret key um, guarantees the soundness. And there is the additional model of uh, the most generalized one, which is the, the uh, NISIC with preprocessing, where both of them get uh, designated keys. So the prover has his own secret key and the verifier has another secret key of his own. Okay, so in the way that it is uh, described now on the slide, the prover can only generate a single proof. So indeed, in this setting, we call uh, such a scheme a single statement designated prover NISEC. Uh, but we would also like to consider the, the stronger model where the, the prover can generate multiple proofs. So if he has multiple pairs of statement X and uh, witness W, he can generate multiple proofs using the same CRS and the same secret key. And still we want the, those three properties to hold. So we will 
focus on the problem of bootstrapping a scheme that is uh, secure with respect to a single statement to one that is secure with respect to multiple statements. So again, we point out that if the prover generates more than a single proof, then what potentially can, uh, can break the security is that he uses the same secret key uh, multiple times, and then some information about the secret key might leak and it might uh, violate the zero knowledge. So when you're going from a single statement to a multi-statement, the thing that can break down is the zero knowledge. So let me talk a bit more about this action of bootstrapping a single statement to multi-statement. So uh, this idea first uh, was suggested uh, in the famous uh, FLS paper where they showed if, that if we have a standard NISEC, a non-designated one, then we can go from a single statement to multi-statement in a generic way. And recently it was shown that a similar technique can be used in the designated verifier model. Uh, but it was also pointed out that the similar technique doesn't seem to work when we're in the designated prover model. So uh, Kim and Wu showed that uh, it is not possible to have this generic bootstrapping, but they showed how to directly construct a deep in scheme using something that is called homomorphic signatures. Okay, so here is uh, our contribution. We show another construction uh, of designated prover in ISEC, but instead of using homomorphic signatures, we use a fully homomorphic encryption, FAG. And more specifically, we take uh, two steps. So in the first one, we show a generic bootstrapping, assuming that the, the single statement deep in ISIC that we start from satisfies some succinctness property that we will define later. So we say that given a succinct single statement deep in ISIC, we can generically bootstrap it to a multi-statement one. And then to, to complete the picture, we show that it is possible to, to construct a single statement uh, deep in ISIC with succinctness given any fully homomorphic encryption scheme. So that will be the main part of our work, but in addition, we also show a two-way equivalence between a designated prover music and something that is called attribute-based signatures, but I will not go into that in this talk, so the main technical part will be about constructing this deep in music from FAG. Okay, so the high-level structure of our construction is as follows. We have an FAG scheme. We then uh, construct from it a succinct single statement deep in ISIC, and then we show how to bootstrap it to a multi-statement deep in ISIC. So uh, again, as I pointed out earlier, single statement means that the zero knowledge guarantee holds as long as the prover only uses the secret key once in order to generate a proof. And now what I mean by succinctness is that the, the setup algorithm which generates the, the CRS and the secret key is of complexity that is independent of the relation R. So its running time and its output is of size that is independent of R. Okay, so before I show how to construct succinct single statement deep in ISIC from FAG, I want to point out that uh, if we don't care about the succinctness, we only want a single statement deep in ISIC, then it is actually possible to get it from any one-way function, which also explains why generic bootstrapping uh, uh, with high probability does not exist. So the idea is to allow the prover to encrypt the witness with some symmetric encryption. So in the setup algorithm, we begin with uh, sampling a symmetric key, and then we use the following circuit. So we have the circuit that verifies the relation R. It takes as input some statement X, and in addition, it takes as input an encryption of a witness. So this circuit will take the encrypted witness, will decrypt it, and then will verify it uh, with respect to R according to the input X uh, that it received. So we look at this circuit, and now we compute garbling of it, the garbled circuit of, of the circuit that we just defined, and eventually we compute commitments to all of the input labels of the garbled circuit. So all of that will be the CRS of the construction, and we can assume uh, without loss of generality that the secret key is the 
is the is is all of the randomness of the set of algorithms. So so we assume that now that the verifier uh, sorry that the prover can get to see the secret key and all of the randomness that was used uh, for the garbling and, uh, and all of the randomness that was used for the commitments. Okay, so now we have the prover. Uh, he has his statement X and some witness W, and he doesn't want to reveal W. So he uses the secret key in order to encrypt W. He gets uh, this uh, W tilde, the encrypted, the encrypted version of W. And now he looks at, at uh, this pair of X and the encrypted W and provides uh, labels of the garbled circuit according to this input and also the commitments to, to the corresponding labels. So the verifier now can, can verify uh, the, the commitments in order to know that he indeed got valid labels and then he can execute the circuit and to verify that R accepts uh, this X with respect to some W. So the reason that this construction satisfies zero knowledge only with respect to a single proof is because the prover reveals some of the labels of the garble circuits. And we know that the garble circuit is secure only as long as the adversary gets to see only a set of labels for a single input. And this construction uses only one-way function because we use a symmetric key encryption, a garble circuit, and commitments, which all of them can be realized from, from one-way functions. Now we have this construction, but we want to add to it the succinctness uh, property. And in order to compromise for that, we, we now allow to use a fully homomorphic encryption instead of one-way function. So just to remind you, by succinctness, we mean that the complexity of the setup algorithm should be independent of the relation R. So, uh, what you see now on the slide is still the construction that we saw from one-way function, and we can see now that the setup algorithm complexity grows with R because we need to compute a garbled circuit that depends on this R. So the idea here is to postpone the computation that depends on R in a way that it will be performed by the prover and the verifier independently instead of doing the setup. So we do it as follows. So first, instead of sampling a standard symmetric key, we sample a secret key of a homomorphic encryption scheme. And then, instead of garbling the circuits that uh, decrypts the witness and executes R, we, we garble a circuit that only takes homomorphic encryption ciphertexts and decrypt it with the secret key that we sampled. Okay, so now uh, how can we still guarantee that this protocol will be with respect to the relation R? So we postpone the computation of R to the prover and the verifier. So after the prover computes an encryption of W, now it is a homomorphic encryption of W, then you can homomorphically compute the, the circuit that has the statement X and code it in it, and it verifies it with respect to R and the encrypted witness. So after he performs this homomorphic encryption, he will get a ciphertext CT, which encrypts a single bit, either 0 or 1, which denotes whether the relation accepted this witness or not. So given the ciphertext, he can then do the same as before, which is to provide the labels of the garbled circuit that correspond to the ciphertext along with their decommitments. So now the verifier gets to see the statement X and the homomorphically encrypted version of the witness, which is W tilde. So we can locally also compute the exact same ciphertext. We will also compute this uh, uh, homomorphic evaluation of, of R with respect to X and the encrypted witness. You will end up with the same ciphertext and then you can do as before, which is to verify the, the commitments with respect to the labels that he got, and then to execute the garbage circuit and see whether the output is zero or one. Okay, so now I uh, assume that we have a single statement uh, deep in ISIC and we want to convert it to one that can support multiple statements. So a naive solution would be to generate exponentially many instances of a single statement deep in ISIC, and then every time the prover wants to, to, to generate a new proof, then he can randomly sample one of those instances and hope that he never uses the, the same 
the same one twice, and then given this randomly uh, sampled instance, you will generate a proof with, with respect to it. So uh, the idea is to take this solution, which is no, non-efficient because it runs in exponential time, and to somehow convert it to a more efficient one. So the high-level idea is to postpone the generation of these instances to be on the fly, so only on demand, when, once the prover wants to generate a new proof. So we consider this conceptual uh, tree structure of all of the instances of the single statement deep in this X. So we have a binary tree of depth security parameter, and then we think of each node as an independent instance of a st single statement deep in ISIC. And eventually we will have a two to the security parameter leaves of the tree, and each of the leaves can be used to, to prove an independent statement in the multi-statement construction. So now we want to, to generate the tree root uh, to actually generate in the, in the real setup algorithm of the multi-statement construction, and then to allow the prover and the verifier to parallelly uh, generate the same intermediate instances of the tree. Okay, so now the question is which relation will be associated with each of the instances of the single statement deep in is. So we said that for the leaves, we want them to be used to actually prove statements in the multi-statement uh, protocol. So we will associate them with the real relation R for which we generated the, the multi-statement construction. And now for each level of the tree, we will need to, to define some relations. So for the ith level, we will define the relation Ri. And now the question is how to define this relation. So we want each tree node to provide a proof that its two children were generated honestly. Because the security of the single statement relies on the fact that the CRS was generated honestly. And if we let the prover just generate them the way that he wants, then he can generate a bad CRS and then he can prove false statements. So in order to prevent the prover from generating an arbitrary CRS, we use every three node to prove that uh, its two children were generated honestly with respect to a valid CRS. So we want the relation in the ice level, the Ri, to verify that nodes of the i plus 1 level were generated with respect to the relation Ri plus 1. So we define the relations recursively. We start from the leaves node, which is associated with the real relation R, and then we go up in the tree until we get to the tree root, which is described by R0. So a bit more formally, the relation Ri will take two CRS uh, values that correspond to two children nodes, and in addition, some random string R, and then it will authorize this pair as long as the two CRS values were indeed generated by a setup algorithm with respect to the relation Ri plus 1 with the randomness R. So R works as the witness in this relation, so uh, the verifier doesn't get to see the witness because of the zero knowledge property, so he cannot learn anything that he shouldn't learn because the CRS is public, so it is okay for him to learn CRS1 and CRS2. Now, because we want uh, the, um, the soundness to hold, we need this randomness R to be truly random, which means that also R, the witness, cannot be sampled by the prover. So we will actually choose this R at the very beginning of the scheme when we, when we generate the, the, the tree root. We'll uh, choose a truly random R and this R should be used in all of the nodes of the tree. So now there is another problem because if we use the same R in the setup algorithm, so we end up with the exact same instance of the single statement construction, and then it is like uh, proving multiple statements with respect to the same instance. So now we, we violate the zero knowledge. So we will not use simply R, but we will XOR it with the value that comes from a PRF. 
So the PRF seed will be known only to the prover, and uh, to the eyes of the verifier, those values uh, will look truly random. So the, the, the pseudo-randomness of the PRF is for the zero knowledge to hold, and the real randomness of the R value is for the soundness to hold. And it turns out that if we saw those two values for every node, then we can guarantee simultaneously both the soundness and the zero knowledge. So there are some details that I'm not getting into here, but uh, this is the high level idea. And I want to point out that if you look at the complexity of Ri, then it is at least twice as the complexity of the setup algorithm with respect to Ri plus one. So this is why we need the succinctness. If we didn't have the succinctness, then the setup algorithm with respect to Ri plus one will run uh, in time that is proportional to Ri plus one. And then the complexity of Ri will be at least twice. And because we have a security parameter uh, uh, levels of the tree, we will end up with an exponential blow up uh, in, the, in the running time and in the description of those relations. So this is, why, this is why the succinctness is required. So if we take the succinct deep in uh, for single statement from FAG and combine it with the bootstrapping technique that we just saw, we end up with a new deep in construction from FAG. So I want now to compare it with previously known constructions. So first recall that I said earlier that there is the construction by Kim and Wu from homomorphic signatures. And then we can combine it uh, with the homomorphic signatures construction from LWE by GBW. If we compare it to, to our work when FAG is instantiated from LWE, uh, we actually get better parameters with our technique. And this is because uh, in FAG it is known how to do a bootstrapping and I'm completely overloading the notation here, but in the context of uh, FAG, bootstrapping means that we can generate a secret key uh, of size that is independent of the circuit to be computed. And in the homomorphic signatures construction, we don't know how to do this kind of bootstrapping. So there we end up with parameters that go with the depth of the circuit. Another construction is the NISIC from FAG by Canetti et al. And this is incomparable because on one hand, they get the stronger notion of NISIC, which doesn't require the designated prover setting. But on the other hand, their assumption is uh, stronger because they assume that the FAG satisfies circular security. Uh, another construction is the NISIC uh, directly from a WE by PyCart et al. So again, this is incomparable because we have this generic assumption uh, of FAG, but on the other hand, uh, they get the stronger notion of NIS without designated prover. And lastly, there are other constructions that rely on completely different kind of assumptions of assumptions uh, on group with binding our maps. So to sum up the results, we show a generic bootstrapping theorem uh, for succinct deep in music from single statement to multi-statement. We show how to construct this succinct single statement deep in music using any fully homomorphic encryption. And we show an equivalence between deep in music and attribute-based signatures, which are also known to be equivalent to homomorphic signatures. As corollaries, we get a new construction of deep in music from fully homomorphic encryption, and also new constructions of attribute-based signatures and homomorphic signatures also from homomorphic encryption.